Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and welcome to the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. In the last video, I discussed how to use the OpenAI Analytics Connector to be used as part of a chart object using a expression. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the OpenAI Analytics Connector as part of your data model. Before we continue, please be sure to visit the Click Learning Portal at learning.click.com for all your personalized and structured learning needs of what Click has to offer. Here you can select from both free and subscription-based content, instructor-led training, skills assessments, and robust video tutorials. Check out the video tour on the main page to get started. All right, so I'm really excited to show you this one because I actually integrated a few systems into my ClickCloud Analytics app, and I really would like to show you how it all works. So let's set up the scenario where we have an order system. Customer places an order, maybe they receive it, maybe they change their mind, they need to open up a customer support ticket, and that information needs to be entered into another system. And in this case, I'm using a development environment of HubSpot, and I also have a development environment of Shopify that I use to create these scenarios. So let's say that customer was not happy, they ordered the wrong controller, and we want to use our OpenAI analytics connector with a prompt that I will show you. And that prompt is to suggest a customer service response based off of the information in the ticket, basically to help the representative reply in an appropriate manner. So in this instance, I'm actually gonna go into HubSpot and I'm gonna create a ticket. And the ticket name here will say, uh, ordered wrong control pad. And the order number for this one, now I actually have a system here that has canceled orders. So I'm just gonna look at orders that have been canceled and we'll just use 2022 for now. And here, 1745. And this will bring me to the instance of Shopify. You can see Michael Tarallo ordered this controller in Shopify. So we'll just create a fictitious scenario that order 1745 um, is related to this issue. Ticket description, control pad is not correct. Need to order new controller. And this happened via email and priority is high, today's date, and that's it. So now we create the ticket. Okay, so now we have the ticket created. Now, if we go into the service tickets, you can see all the tickets that were created. In this system, we have one, two, three, four, five tickets have been created. Now, I'm actually also running a talent stitch uh, replication job that's going to grab those new tickets and load them into a Microsoft Azure SQL instance that I'm then using with Click Cloud Analytics. So this extraction is going to happen in about five minutes or so. When that happens, that system will be ready to populate the Azure SQL database, and then I could reload my Click Cloud Analytics app and we'll see that new ticket in there. So let's go into the order system. And at this time, as you can see of this latest refresh, our issue count is at three. Now, when I was running this scenario, I actually ran this a few times. So let me just do a quick reload and it probably has done its reload already. So this one will probably update to um, four related issues at this time. And you could actually see tickets four was in the reload. And now you can see issue count is four. So navigating this app, I can you know click over to the tickets and you can see the individual tickets here. Now you're not gonna see the new one because we didn't run that reload or replication yet. And we'll get to that when we do that and you'll see that live. But if we go back to the tickets, you can see the auto generated responses by the open AI analytics connector for the other issues. For example, sign is too small. Uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We apologize for any inconvenience. Please let us know your desired dimensions for the sign and we can get a replacement sent out to you as soon as possible. Right, so imagine you have your support rep who just needs a little guidance in replying. Maybe they're a little rough around the edges and uh, they need a little bedside manner when replying. 
Okay, so these are actually being sent to the OpenAI Analytics Connector uh, row by row. So let me show you how I did that. All right, so we're gonna reset what we have available here, but let me just go to the data model viewer and show you some behind the scenes. So this is my current data model that I use for my fictitious ordering system and ticketing system, uh, customer information, order data, uh, all that type of stuff. But you'll notice that I also have a new table called OpenAI, and it's actually linked to the tickets system as well. So I have a tickets um, table, which is coming from HubSpot. So we really got a lot of stuff going on here. We have information integrated with Shopify, information integrated with HubSpot, um, Microsoft Azure, all that stuff. So in this case here, um, this table is gonna reload with that new ticket we entered um, within five or eight minutes, whatever the re uh, replication time was. And then we're gonna generate this table. So let me show you how that's done. So I'm gonna go into the data load editor and you can see we have an open AI section here, okay? Now, the other thing I do wanna show you is there's another section here called support tickets. So this is just loading the data from Microsoft Azure, which was the replicated data from Talent into Microsoft uh, SQL Azure. And you'll notice there's something called the um, property subject. And there's also something here uh, called property content, which is the, the description, right? All that really is, is just pulling this information that we entered into HubSpot. So nothing really, uh, you know, uh, complex here. It's just pulling in that information from HubSpot. And then for the OpenAI part, I'm gonna show you how we set this up. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to set up the connection, right? And I just glossed over the fact that there were a number of tokens set up and there were a couple of properties and I didn't really show you the insert script part because that wasn't part of video one. Video two, which is part two of this, is gonna show you how to now bring that into that data model as I stated. So I'm just gonna delete this um, for now, okay? Let me just delete. And the thing I wanted to bring back was also for the support tickets to show you how I created a custom prompt to be passed per row. So when loading the tickets, right, we here have load archive, load associations, load create date. This is just stuff coming in from the HubSpot. But here, I actually dynamically created a prompt that says write a possible reply uh, a support engineer could write for the below support case. Now it doesn't have to say for the below, it could say for the support case. It's getting the context from the prompt, for example. Um, so it knows that it wants to write a reply. It knows it's got support engineer. Uh, it knows it's a support case. So it's going to generate its um, AI response or insight based off the prompt. But then I concatenate property underscore content, which is actually the uh, description. From the ticket right so I, we said ordered wrong control pad and then in the description we put control pad is not correct need to order new control pad that's what it's going to generate um the prompt but it's going to be dynamic per row we're going to use this as prompt field within the next section so now i just have a new section called open ai i already have the connector here called open ai new we're going to insert that data now resident table is your source table. Where is it coming from? In this case, it's coming from tickets, right? So if we go back to support tickets, you can see I have a uh, directive here that's just you know declaring the table name tickets. So that's what that is. And then there's a prompt section or the text that you want to send it per row, and that's going to be the field name called prompt, okay? And there's also what's called the associative field, which I'm going to show you when I edit the um, connection. Okay. So I'm gonna open up this edit connection. Now we already put the key in and we already put all the information in. Now the association field here is the field that you're going to be linking the OpenAI table to. So in this case, I'm gonna be linking the subject for the tickets that come back from HubSpot directly to the OpenAI with the association field called property subject. That's all that is. So now I'm just gonna select data. The resident table here is tickets. The data field is going to be the field name prompt that we created. Now, this is gonna automatically display this open AI table no matter what you put in here. So it's important to understand that 
when you put this information in here, it's basically going to create the configuration parameters when it when you insert the script. Now, if you have other column names with the name ID, you might want to rename this to something else. Uh, I don't need this for this instance, so I'm just going to pull that out. And then I'm going to click insert script. And what you're going to see is it has load object created model prompt tokens completion, blah, blah, blah. Choices text is the response. Okay. That's going to come back. So that's the field we're going to use. And then the rest of this is just the connection name and you know, the, where it links to and what the prompt is going to be. That's basically it. Now I accidentally inserted this into the, um, section mark section. I meant to put it here. So I'm just going to cut and paste that there. And that's pretty much all we need to do at this point. So what we're going to do now is let me check our extraction. Okay. So it ran. So next extraction is in about 27 minutes. So that means that the replication job, let's check our load. Okay. So our loads and extraction have occurred and four minutes ago was extracted and loaded a few seconds ago. Okay. So Talon took care of what it needed to do from HubSpot to Microsoft uh, Azure SQL. So now all we're going to do here is let's go to the sheet. Okay, I'm going to go into the table and you can see what we're looking at the issue ID, the order number, number, the subject, and then you can see suggested reply. Now, if I go to the expression, I'm just using a purge char just to get rid of some of the white space that's there. Um, but we don't need to do that. But if we don't do that, it kind of puts two blank lines across the top. Not sure. That's just the way OpenAI responds. So here we're just going to put choices text within this suggested field right here. Okay. So now those are our four tickets. Now, if you remember, we entered a new ticket, right? So I'm just going to click get new tickets. So now it's going to basically run a reload and it's going to take that new ticket ID and it's going to create those suggestions for that new ticket. Now, if you remember, it was the wrong control pad. All right. I think it's done. So now we have five. So let's um, take a look at this. So we have one, two, three, four, and we scroll down. And there it is ordered wrong control pad. Control pad is not correct. Need to order new controller. And then you can see the response. Thank you for your inquiry. We apologize for the difficulty you're having with your control pad. We can certainly help you with ordering a new controller. Please let us know what type of controller you're looking for. And we can provide you with more information ordering the correct model. Okay. Now, obviously there's other responses for the other issues that are there. Um, similar to the first video, I could have sent this information directly on a click, like I did with the products and the platforms and the titles of the products. And it then sends the generation in real time. But with the OpenAI analytics connector inserted into the data load script with the data model, you're now generating that information per row and now keeping it as part of your data model. So at this point, this app, every time it reloads, it's going to either generate those new responses, or at this time you could always just offload it to your data mart. And these are the suggested responses for these typical problems. So you're sort of building up a knowledge base as well for, let's say common issues or common problems that people can respond to, or, or that the customer support reps could respond to. Okay. So just another quick example of how it is possible to uh, embed generative AI into your actual app. In this case, within your data model, I think it's a really exciting time for this type of content to be introduced into an analytics application. But of course, there's always some caveats and some unknowns uh, utilizing AI within your apps, especially when it's not within your control. So I'm sure there's additional checks and balances that need to be put in place with these AI companies that create this stuff. But as you know, we're just facilitating the relationship between Click and OpenAI, sending the content that you wish um, to send, and then the responses we get back directly from OpenAI. Okay. So once again, just let me know what you think, and I can't wait to see you on the next video. Take care.